Hello, everyone. So hopefully I'll be back Tuesday. And having said that, I really would like for us to do a lab that I've been wanting to do for like a week and a half. Um, what we're going to be doing, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so I can kind of go through this pre-lab document with you that you're going to be working on today on Monday. Um, so this is based on the demo that Ella, my daughter, and I did from a few weeks back. Okay, and I so cleverly titled the lab, Hey, Mrs. Lovell, I've got gas. Um, I asked my 10-year-old if that was inappropriate, and she giggled and thought it was just fine. So go on with that. All right, um, this is argument-driven inquiry. That's what ADI stands for, by the way. We're looking at stoichiometry, chemical reactions, and gas collection. Your team members will go there. And the way that we're going to run this show for this one I am going to allow on this particular lab for virtual team members to participate in a Google Meet type setting. I have seen some of the other teachers from other classes do this with some projects that they've done. And I thought, I guess we could try it with the lab. So uh, I am going to open it up that you can have anywhere from one to three members of your team. Um, of course, if you're planning to, to do this lab, at, at least one of them has to have access to the equipment list that I'm going to go over here in just a minute. Um, so like that means that probably one of them needs to be here at school unless um, somebody at home has all of the required equipment. OK. All right. So let's go through this. The guiding question, the one that we're going to try to answer while we're in the lab um, in the next couple of days what mass of carbon dioxide gas is produced and collected from a simple reaction, from a simple chemical reaction? So you're trying to figure out how much carbon dioxide gas could be produced and collected from a reaction. Okay, um, I talk about the objective. I talk about the demonstration that I did with Ella. You can click on that if you want to rewatch it or if you didn't watch it the first time. Um, you're going to be given a set amount of baking soda, which you will determine and a uh, um, you'll have a set amount of vinegar, okay? Just to make it interesting, you're going to want to take a video um, using either your phone or your Chromebook. You will need to narrate what is going on before, during, and after the reaction, describe amount of reactants used, and talk about what you're doing. And again, if you want to see an example of how I expect this to be done, go back and look at the demo, all right? I don't want you to just, I don't want a video of no talking and just, you know, you pour something in, you collect some gas in a balloon, you tie it off. I want you to demonstrate what you're doing as though you're making a record of, of data because that's kind of what we're doing. We're going to do our, our CER in a little bit different way uh, than what we've done in the past. So you need to make a good video with lots of description of what you're doing. Um, you need to explain it like you're doing a cool video blog, right? Or something, I don't know. All right, um, here's the pre-lab portion. You gotta look up the reaction between baking soda and vinegar, write the balanced chemical equation below, um, write the word equation here. This is just the sentence that describes what's going on, right? So um, there you go, you need to fill in those two boxes. The materials that you'll, you'll be given if you're here at school, baking soda, and vinegar, it's the 5% acetic acid solution. The baking soda, per trial, you can use up to five grams. The vinegar, per trial, you can use between 80 to 100 milliliters. As long as you stay within that range, you don't have to get super duper specific. Um, and you don't even have to be super consistent because you have excess vinegar. As long as you're using at least 80, milliliters when you do your uh, lab it's fine like uh, you just you don't have to get super duper picky about that you'll have access to a latex balloon um, an Erlenmeyer flask or a plastic bottle like if you're at home doing this uh, you need a digital scale which we have here at school if you're at home some people have like digital kitchen scales if they like if they're bakers or if they other of their activities I guess um, plastic scoop, just like a spoon or something that you can scoop out um, baking soda with. So, all right, as a group, answer the following questions. So this is where this will come in. So 
let's say that you're sitting in class today and you're like, oh, um, it could be me and you and then this kid from home, this virtual kid from home. If you have their number, text them and say, hey, have you looked at this? Do you want to be in our group? You can go ahead and do a Google me today. Um, you can fill in this document together. But this pre-lab document has to be done correctly before you can do the lab. Okay, so you'll discuss how much baking soda you want to use. You can't use more than five grams per trial. You will have to do some stoichiometry to figure out um, how much carbon dioxide will be produced because you're going to have to make a prediction before you can do the lab. You've got to answer this question. Is the predicted amount of carbon dioxide known as actual or theoretical yield and why? Um, I want you guys to really think your way through this. Think your way through the experiment and go back and watch the demo video if you're not sure of how to get started or what to do. Okay, be sure to include what things you're going to mass, when are you going to mass them, discuss how many trials you'll conduct. Why would it be important to run more than one trial? What's the point? Why in science do we tend to want to run more than one trial? And what do you need to make sure you do if you're running more than one trial? Do you want to change up stuff every time you run a trial? You need to talk about that. Okay. All right. Anyways, that's the pre-lab. You've got to have that document filled in and ready to go before I let you back in the lab to try it out. And when I say a detailed description, I mean a detailed description. Like you will not get to try this out until you have a detailed idea of what you're going to do in the lab and the stoichiometry has to be right. All right. So make sure that you talk it over with your group. Uh, get started on it. This whole project, and you'll get more details as the week goes on, this whole project will be due by Friday of this week. And that includes the video um, claim evidence reasoning, which I'll talk about later on in the week. Okay. All right. The, the pre-lab, try to get that done um, and ready to go by Tuesday would be awesome. So some of you can go ahead and get started when I get back. Um, and if at the very latest, have it ready to go by Thursday. Wednesday, we have a test over stoichiometry. Hope you did your review. I hope to see you guys tomorrow um, or like Tuesday, I guess. But uh, let me know if you have questions about any of this and I'll see you then.